Well, motherfucker, you can't have my cornbread. That's for damn sure. Because if you try to take my cornbread, part two of my killing spree gonna begin up in here on your ass right now. If you think about my cornbread, begin to taste out your mouth. That's for damn sure. Now, fuck him. Fuck this. Because I'm from New York City, goddammit. Nobody take no cornbread from me. And that goes for you and any other you motherfucking farmers wanna try some shit. You fuck around with me, it's gonna be consequences and What up? What up? All my good people out there, what's good, y'all? It's Maestro Styles and Trey Frazier. Welcome to another yes, episode sir. of the Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. Live on the website, barbershopsportstalkpodcast.com. Uh, be sure to follow us on our Twitter account at barbershopspor2. Also on the Facebook page. Also on Instagram at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. And also, you can follow us live on the YouTube channel. So, make sure y'all subscribe to that channel real good. Um, Maestro Styles, what's good, man? What's going on, B? What's going on, man? Uh, you know, getting ready for this web outside. Yeah, everybody's panicking and everything. I was just out maybe 30 minutes ago, and people just ripping and running around trying to get stuff. And, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, this big anticipation of snow, and then it turns out it's, you know, less than what, you know, they predict. That's usually how it mostly is at times. So, so yeah, I was out in the streets trying yeah. to, uh, you know, get some things together. But uh, it does feel good to kind of be back in a normal spot. Uh, we normally record this show on a Tuesday night, and because... Our team schedules have been shifted in the last two weeks. We've been kind of doing IG Live for a little bit, which we do, you know, every Thursday anyway. But we've kind of been using it in a different format, and we actually haven't been doing a podcast for maybe like a week or so. So I'm happy to be back, you know, in the slot doing this. And uh, I guess we can get started, man. Um, Yeah. We we, we can get it going. Uh, I I think I'm going to... Woke the kids up last night, probably around 11, 15, 11, 20 last night because Lamar Jackson had his own Willis Reed imitation in the game last night. And, you know, just for people, if you under a rock, uh, the Ravens came out with the victory 47-42 over the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. Um, defense really did not matter at all in this game, with the exception of the Bowser interception that set us up at the one um, for that touchdown there. I think it was in the third quarter or something like that. Um, but there were two things for me, um, and, and really I got a lot to say about this game, but really there's like two turning points in the football game for me that swung this thing. So um, when they scored, when they got the ball back, they being the Browns, it was 34-20, I think. They got the ball back, and it was announced through the TV that Lamar had went to the locker room. Um, they didn't know why. Nobody knew, you know, what was going on and whatnot. And then next thing you know, you know, Twitter starts flooding the post with, oh, he had to take a dump, he had to drop a deuce, you know, and all this stuff. And it's like, all right, I mean, even if that's the case, all right, cool, go ahead, do what you got to do, and, you know, come back on the field. Um, next thing you know, Browns go down the field, they score the touchdown, um, you know, they cut it, uh, I think it was 28-34, I think it was, and, you know, everybody's like, yo, where's Lamar, like, what, you know, what's going on, so, 
at that point, it was, he was questionable to return to the game, so it was like, oh, snap, like, this is, like, this is going bad, and on that same touchdown drive, where I think they, they put two points up, I think it was a two-point conversion, where it goes through Kareem Hunt's hands, and it lands in people Jones' hands in the end zone, and plays like that, where you think you, you know, you think you stop somebody, and somebody else, you know, comes up with the ball in that situation, that's when things really kind of go bad for the opposing team. And for a while there, I just thought, okay, this is over. This this might be a playoff fate right here. Like, this, like the momentum is really shifting right now, and we don't have our guy, you know, coming out the locker room to, you know, save the day. So, um, so here's the other turning point, because it, it got bad um, when McSorley, the backup, came out uh, for those three plays. It was a three and out. Um, I don't know why Greg Roman decided that he thought McSorley was Lamar Jackson. Like, you know, you saw that little, I guess, I think he ran for five yards in a situation. They were trying to do the read option there, and I'm kind of like, nah, like, he's not Lamar Jackson. Just make that dude sit in the pocket and throw the ball. Like, don't don't even do that. Or just run the football like we've been doing earlier in the game. So, so here's the second turning point. So, obviously the Browns they got the ball back in that situation. They go down, they score the touchdown. Um, they kick the extra point. So now it's 35-34, and McSorley's back out there. Lamar still in the locker room, and the third and ten, and McSorley throws that ball, and Billy Sneed had to go and make a grab for. Like, I mean, it was, it was really, for me, it was all Willie Sneed making that play. And from that point on, we ran the football. Um, the Browns wasn't stopping us from running the football. And then we get to the fourth and five where McSorley, and unfortunately, um, it wasn't serious. He, it looked like he tore his ACL, but it, it was just a strain at that point. So once that happened, Lamar came out. Fourth and five, it's like, yo, we'll make a play. You know, we just got one play, you know, to keep this, you know, keep this thing alive. And they ran the play. And I thought he was going to run for the first down, Maestro. I, I really thought, like, just looking, you know, as the TV was panning, like, I thought he was just going to run. And then he throws the ball in Marquise Brown, who had dropped, like, three balls earlier in the game, makes the catch, scores a touchdown you know, takes the lead, and ever since that point, you know, Baker goes back down, he scores, and then we just so happen to have the ball last, and Tucker, who, you know, Tucker's going to the Hall of Fame, I don't care what nobody says, um, 55 yards, you know, 45-42, and then we get the little small safety, which was, you know, really nothing unless you're a gambler, but um, this was the best game of the season. And it's not even close to anything that we've seen so far. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, definitely the game of the year. Um, I'll be one hundred percent honest. I didn't see it till today. <laughs> um, um, what was I, you doing I, I, last night? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, working. I was. I was working. Um, <laughs> yeah. By the time I got in the house, um, yeah. I had yeah you know, had some deadlines I needed to work on. So. Um, I didn't watch it till today, like like literally um, mm-hmm. today. Um, so, uh, for but certain, you had some deadlines. So. But for certain, but for certain, um, game of the year for certain. Um, look, for me, um, I was kind of rooting for y'all. I had to root for a team in the AFC North. Uh, I was kind of rooting for y'all today, um, and it's really just because I like Lamar Jackson. Well, um, really, it's a smart choice. I mean, you are, be, it's, if you're talking about playoff, I mean, if you're talking about division, um, yes, yeah, yeah, for certain. And um, we would have to beat Cincinnati if we, if we beat Cincinnati uh, next week, then we clinch the uh, division. Um, so uh, that was kind of my rooting interest. Um, hell of a game, man! Hell of a game. I, I really don't like when when you know me once. That that was that was Kansas City versus the Rams a couple of years ago. Yep. Um it, it it was one of them games and uh when those when you get those types of games, it's really at this point it's like 
you throw all throw statistics, throw you know, throw all that out the window. Yeah. Who's going to be the victor at the end of the game? Like that was that was those that was that game uh, last night. It wasn't the, like X's and O's. It's like throw it out the window. Who's going to be on top of this when it's all said and done? Who's going to make the last play at the end? Yeah. Um, you know, obviously it was the Ravens. Um, look, they made the plays and, and Justin Tucker. Um, much like you said, as a Hall of Fame, I don't know who would ever question that. I mean, if I'm being honest, um, that concept about Justin Tucker being a Hall of Fame was probably dead in my eyes. I mean, that was set in cement yep. two years ago, honestly. So, um, you know, right. def- definitely nothing new there. But, um, you know, look, um, I-, I think even with the, you know, with you, are you guys in, are you guys in the seven right now with the win? We are not in the seventh spot right okay. now. We are still in the eighth spot because the Dolphins, while we have the same record, as Miami, Miami still has that conference record, conference record. better than us. Because right okay. now, all of our losses are to the AFC teams right now. And okay. I think the Dolphins are 5-4 and four in the conference, I believe. So I think we're 5-5. Five and five. Are we 5-5? Five and five? Yeah, we're 5-5 five and five right now. So okay. they're, they're better in that regard than we are. And I, I looked this up earlier today because, you know, in my mind, of all the years I've been watching NFL football and, you know, we've been watching teams that win 10 games sometimes. I mean, I remember one point when uh, Brady got hurt that one year and the Patriots went 11-5 and with Matt Castle, they missed the playoffs. And they were, I guess in that case, they were the seven seed. But, you know, everybody knows that it's top six teams. That's really been the traditional playoff format. Mm-hmm. Um I've been of the mindset that I thought 10 games was going to get us in because of the extra playoff spot. You know, we've seen seven seeds get 10 wins. We've seen that. I've Mm -hmm. never seen an eight seed in any conference in any year get double digit wins. I've never seen that before. Right. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, it's going to take 10. If we get the 10, we'll be good. I was just doing some, you know, playing, you know, pick up games with some of the, you know, some of the teams that still left, like the Colts, you know, the, the Titans and um, the Dolphins and pretty much everyone that's in that wild card or mm-hmm. haven't clinched a division yet, you know, kind of, you know, predicting what the games were. And there's a situation, there's three situations, right? So the Colts, the Browns, and the Ravens. Those teams could win 11 games and be the eighth seed. Mm-hmm. Like any one of those combinations could happen. And I'm just sitting here, and, like, and I'm just sitting here like, damn. And you know, not the you know, and not that. I mean, well, you know, I guess in a moment of of honesty and and, and, and humility, um, look, man. If and I don't think Pittsburgh is going to lose to Cincinnati. That's very clear. No. Um, no. But um, God forbid. And 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 here we go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. uh, uh, this is this is obviously more even. Look, this is this is critically important. Um, after this loss to Buffalo, so right, right. um, let's so be clear: this, the Steelers clinched the spot already because Miami we're in the lost. playoffs. Yes, 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 we're in yeah. the playoffs. Yes, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm speaking about division. I'm um, I mean, I mean, I'm not going to say we're out of the, you know, we're out of the whole one seed, yeah. but we're out of it. In, if if I believe Kansas City is going to Kansas City for the rest of the season, yeah. So um, so now we're playing the 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 speeding game, I guess. So um, now it's about can you hold off the Bills for the number two seed? Number two, and but but, but really, I don't care about the two seed. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that, I don't I don't think the two seed will change anything drastically. We won the two or the three. Um, or, right. Or the well, it, it'll it'll change it'll change your opponent. That's really all. Yeah, it is. That, that really right. Right. I'm I'm not super concerned about um, opponents, but then I'm concerned about the buy. And, and uh, home field throughout, 
You know, right, right. And, that, and the fact that the Steelers have pretty much been like playing every week. I know you guys had a bye week, but it really wasn't a traditional bye week because yeah. these guys still kept coming to the facility and not really getting that time off. So, yeah, um, that, that, I, it's critical. I say, yeah, I say all that to say that, um, you know, in, 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 I guess in reference to the playoff picture in the AFC, it's just, um, it's, it, it's stacked. And, and I'm not going to say every team outside of the Kansas City Chiefs um, should, you know, they, they, they got they got a long road ahead of them and on their road to trying to get to the Super Bowl. Right, right. I, I'll be honest with you. Um, if we're just talking teams in the AFC, um, there's about I, – there's like – legitimately there's like nine teams right now going for seven spots. Mm-hmm. I think I think the Raiders are done. I I, mm-hmm. I think the Raiders are done. Um, mm-hmm. They, you know, and I, and I've said a couple of weeks ago that if they got in the playoffs, that I think they'd be ready for a matchup against you know any one of those top you know four teams. But when when, when you show that much inconsistency, you know, and I and I and I get. I guess losing to the Colts, okay. I think we've we've we figured out that the Colts are for real. I I just didn't think that they would beat the Raiders the way they did. Um, but that was I mean, that I was the Raiders. So what's that? Um, I said, but I, 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 if I remember correctly, I picked the Raiders to win that game. I did too. And um, you know, them that win the game for me. Uh, for, I mean, even for me, even more than losing to um, was it the Falcons two weeks ago? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. for you know, because it's like, all right, that's a out you know, out of conference, whatever, whatever. Um, but for them to lose to a direct opponent in the um, you know, in the AFC, yeah, you know, it's not like they played the you know a team that's not in the hunt. Like this is the the Colts is a team that the Raiders should have innately woke up for. Yeah. Um. And they didn't. Um. Yeah. So for them to lose and then add to your to lose like that, it's like all right. Yeah. Like you you, you can go ahead. And, you can go ahead and throw that season. And, oh yeah. And, you know the, the Raiders. You can throw the out. X on them at this point. Um. It's it's really yeah. about it's right now. It's it's really about eight eight teams right now. It's eight teams, seven spots, and. I mean, if we go through these schedules, man, it's, it's not like I mean, the only the only real head to head matchup that's coming up in the next three weeks is Dolphins at the Raiders. Like that's really the only one that really could, you know, kind of swing a little bit. But even after that, I mean, you look at the Colts schedule and they got Jacksonville, they got Houston and then they got Pittsburgh, I think, in the middle of that. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, let's say they went out. And then you got the Browns, who are going to be in the Meadowlands back to back weeks, and then finish up, you know, against the Steelers. You know, that's you know they could win out. We could win out with you know beating the Bengals, Jags, and Giants. And then let's not forget about the Titans. Like that. That's the one team. That's the one team that worries me. Like if you know we went out and we somehow miss it, that would be the one team that worries me because. Let's say they don't win the AFC South and they fall into that wild card mix and we lost to the Titans. So we lose that head to head right off the bat if they drop into that wild card right. spot. So that's what worries me. So I'm I'm hoping that the Titans can hold on to that division because at least if the Colts drop to us, we beat the Colts earlier in the season, we can get that tiebreaker yeah. over them. So right. So right. yeah, so it's not like these teams are going to be knocking each other out down the stretch. Everybody's playing somebody different that could you know run the table at this point. So and, and then mm-hmm. you got the Dolphins, um, who got the Patriots at home, and then they're on the road for two. Um, I, uh, Buffalo's the last game, and I forget what the middle game um, in between that is. But you know, again, the Dolphins they they could run the table off. All five yeah. of these teams can run a table. <laughs> um, look, I don't know if Dolphins. You said Dolphins got the guy at Buffalo before the years at the end of the year at seven, seventeen. Um, I I don't know if Dolphins running the table, but 
Yeah, I, I don't um, know. If the, I don't know if the Dolphins are running the table either, because I think I, I I think the Patriots would want would love nothing more than to disrupt the Dolphins' season and find a way to mm-hmm. you know knock them out of a a playoff spot. Because I don't I don't think the Patriots are falling the tent yet. Um, folding the ten as far as they're not. I mean, making the playoffs folding the ten. Folding the ten as in niggas is thinking about vacations already. Like we not like oh, like, no, like, no, like, like, like realistically, um, we don't got a shot at the playoffs, so we just gonna make business decisions and not play as hard. I uh, think no, that I, yeah, I, I think they're gonna that. I think they're gonna play hard. No, I agree with that. I don't think Bill Belichick. I don't think Bill Belichick would allow that of a team of his. Um, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I guess getting to the next uh, important, uh, you know, the important game of the week, and we're still to the AFC. Obviously, um, Pittsburgh being um, <laughs> being that for lack for lack of a more disrespectful word, us losing to Buffalo um, Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, I, look, man. Um, there is, and I, it's it's time to consider what we got to do with Ben Roethlisberger. Um, not because we're paying too much money for the production he's giving us. Um, and I thought I thought that we could, um, you know, kind of, you know. I thought we could Kobe Bryant the situation, rest in peace, for lack of a better term, meaning in his last couple of seasons, even though he might not be given, you know, you know, top notch performance wise in, in his last couple of seasons, if he just give us some decent, you know, some decent. Let me let me let me just say I I don't I don't know if that's a fair comparison. I I think when we talk about those last years of Kobe Bryant, I think people refer to the money that they gave him, and and rightfully so, he's the Mamba. But I don't think people attributed to those failures of those final seasons of Kobe to his play. I think they attributed more to the fact that they overpaid him, they overpaid Kobe Bryant, and was unable to facilitate the roster around Kobe. I think that's entirely different from what you're Seven. saying with. Say you, bro. I'm sorry. I I, I missed what you said. No, I'm I'm saying that I I think when you I'm saying that I I think what you're bringing up with Kobe I think is a bad comparison to the Roethlisberger situation because I think when you look at those final years with the Lakers under Kobe, people attributed those bad seasons under the fact that they overpaid him and didn't give enough money to facilitate the roster around him more than it was his production. Kobe was still good. In those final few years, minus the, you know the year that I guess he had the uh, the Achilles injury, but I don't think Kobe slacked off in terms of production. I just think the team around him wasn't any good. You, his last year, you think he was like I don't think the think- like I don't. I don't think the reason I'm, I'm, I'm being work. conscious. I'm being conscious of what I'm saying because I don't want to. I, I, I certainly don't want to make this a, a, a like I'm being disrespectful to Kobe Bryant, and right. and he's there, and I get that we're speaking sports, but I want to be careful with my words. Sure. I don't think Kobe Bryant. I don't think. Um, and I feel like we spoke about this when he, you know, when Kobe Bryant was in his last, you know, his last few years. Kobe Bryant wasn't Kobe Bryant. Um, he, he was, um, he was allowed to just play, he was, you know, Yeah, I mean, he was, he was getting up there in age, no question about it. Like, he wasn't, you know, what he was in his prime, but I don't think the reason that the Lakers had all those failures, those final years under Kobe Bryant was because of Kobe Bryant. I think the reason that... Uh, no, okay, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, maybe you, I'm, I wasn't saying that it was because of Kobe Bryant. I, okay, I, let me... Let me um, sure, but I think you were trying to make a comparison to the situation with Roethlisberger because you're, I heard you say that he's not... They're not... Um, 
they, they're not getting the production out of Roethlisberger for the money that they're paying him. And then you went to the Kobe Bryant um, comparison, which I, I I didn't think was I didn't think if, was if fair. You, if you feel like if you're saying that they didn't pay Kobe Bryant to get the type of production that his money that based on the money that he was getting, and they were just giving him that money because he was Kobe Bryant. Okay, yeah, I'm with that's you what there. I was. Okay, yeah, that's what okay. I was saying. Um, okay, I'm speaking to I'm speaking solely to, um. If the production that he was get, he would. I'm just gonna say it. Not if it's backlash, I'll, I'll take the backlash. Um, there isn't. Um, he wasn't. No, I'm not gonna say that. Sounds crazy. Um, I mean, Ben Roethlisberger said it himself after the game. He's not playing well. He's not he, he's he's not playing up to his standards, and whether that has to do with age, whether that has to do it with to do injury, age. whether they're I, trying what, to preserve his I'm arm. They're, right. they're not trying to preserve his arm. We hold on, let's let, let's and that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to say without saying it because I don't want to be disrespectful to Kobe Bryant. Um, he's not playing well enough, and it's not because he's not playing well enough because. Um, you know, there's something mechanically he could do to be better. He's just not that guy anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, well we, we, we um, kind of knew that. I mean, we knew that going into the season. Well, uh, no, I don't think I don't think we knew he was this bad though. And um, and I, and, I, and when I say this bad, meaning mm-hmm. he cannot push the ball accurately down the field. Um, if you know, they know exactly what he's doing. Um, I, I put out a tweet um uh, in Sunday, uh, Sunday saying, "Damn, um, you know, I, I didn't say exactly this, but I was like, we need to get back to backyard, backyard Ben Roethlisberger. That's mm-hmm. how we we're going to, you know, ha- we're going to have to make this game interesting because they are jumping the quick routes. Yeah, they know what we're doing, and when yeah. you can jump, when you know what he's going to do, and he's not going to do anything different because he's not capable. Let's be clear, that's what I think." I'm not sure. I mean, we haven't had the opportunity to try it. He's not capable of backyard big more. You're not going to see him hold the ball for eight seconds, right. wait for the cornerbacks to get tired of getting tired to cover the receivers, and then he make a play. Those days are gone. So, but what do you attribute that to? That, do you attribute that to them preserving his arm? Do you attribute that they're to... They're not preserving his arm. I can, there's no way I can say... Not to cut you off, but to cut you off, there's no way I can say they're trying to preserve his arm when he threw the ball 102 times in two games. There's right. no way. I'm, there's no way right. I'm going to say that. And I don't keep you 102 five yard passes. I don't. You don't throw a ball 51 times in a game, two times in a row, and then say to me you're trying to preserve his arm. I don't believe that. Right. Right. So is it? So, is it? Is it his? Is it his arm strength? Is, 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 is the arm strength going? Um, he can throw twenty. He, he can, he can. We've seen him throw the ball. Whether that we've seen him throw it down the field, it mm-hmm. hasn't been uh, greatly accurate. And it seems like they throw on the ball deep down the field more so to make the uh, defense honest than to actually complete a pass. And yeah. Chase Claypool has dropped the has been dropping deep balls all year. Um, it doesn't even seem like they're attempting to throw Deontay Thompson in the deep routes or Juju Smith-Schuster in the uh, mm-hmm. deep routes. It doesn't seem like they're attempting to throw deep routes to the uh, receivers. It seems like, ooh, let's just throw it and hope that either we get a catch from Claypool or we get a defensive pass in the front. That's what they do. Every time they throw a deep ball, anything past 20 yards is a hope that he catches it off for DPI, and it seems like they is leaning more towards, ooh, we'll get a DPI if we throw it out there. Yeah. Um, He's not. He's just not giving us enough um, for a team that has to throw because the running game is so inept. Um, yeah. Yeah. At at this point, thirty million dollars is too much money. Um, and I would love if we were if we weren't a good team, you know, around me. If we weren't a good team, if, you know, we got a decent offensive line, we got quality mm-hmm. receivers, um, we got a defense at least when healthy, we got a, uh, a decent defense but all of our linebackers are depleted outside of um outside of um tj watt yeah. um you know like this is a team that you 
thought when we were all healthy that this was a bowl contending team. And um, for all intents and purposes, um, now that we've taken a two game losing streak, and it's not so much we've lost two games in a row, we've lost two games in a row in December. Um, it's like, okay, now at this point, it's like, um, and I know people have been saying it's been Robsburg the problem all year, and I would kind of say no because we were winning games. But now that the defenses have clearly uh, taken notice that if we could stop the quick pass, we can stop being Robsburg and we can stop this offense, mm-hmm. now I'm like, uh, Ben got to show me something different. He got He has to show me something different because um, if he doesn't, this is going to be a quick playoff trip. This is going to be a quick playoff trip. Um, I, I think. Um, I think we get Miami. We might can beat Miami. Um, I think we can beat the Colts. Um, you know, it, it, but but there's no guarantee. I don't. You know, if there's just no guarantee. There, right. I don't it's, not, it's not a slam dunk that the Steelers into the get out of the first round. round. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, not a guarantee. It's just not, and, and 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 it should and it shouldn't it shouldn't be that way. Um, and I get injuries have something to do with it, but nah, everybody um, nah. everybody going through something this time the of defense, year, man. The defense played well enough for us to win that game uh, Sunday, and they didn't. And to and for me, mm-hmm. I look at Ben Roethlisberger. Um, not only for the loss against Buffalo, but the loss against the football team mm-hmm. and the game against Baltimore, even though we won it. But look, we can't. That yeah. Nah, yeah. we didn't look good offensively, and they, and I think that I think that falls on the shoulders of Ben Roethlisberger and quick passing. I also got to throw Randy uh, Feetner in in it because he's mm-hmm. calling plays, but. Yeah. Um, ben Roethlisberger is a seventeen year vet. At some point, you got to say, look. Mm-hmm. I gotta write this ship, and I don't care what my what this, co- this offensive coordinator says. So I think we're saying the same thing when when I when I say this. I'm gonna say it a little differently than you are. Um, the defense is fine, and you know, just when I look at them play, when I watch them play, even without the you know Devin Bush and without um, Spillane and uh, Bud Dupree, the defense is fine. Um, that first half. Uh, against Buffalo was, I mean, I mean, you, you couldn't do any better than what they did. I mean, they held the Bills to uh, zero points up until, you know, the pick six. Um, but the problem is, is that you'll have a lot of these clean outs, and it's, you know, like you said, it's the, it's the quick throws, it's the short passes, it's the drop passes, you know, Deontay, you know, Another what two two drops in that game before they sat him. Yeah. At, at that point, um, you know, another a couple of drops by some other receivers. Um, you, you know what I mean. So those contribute to three and outs, which contributes to your defense happening to get back on the field so much that as this game wanes and it wanes and it wanes, Buffalo's gonna find that they're gonna find that crease at some point and. Stephon Diggs was getting in that ass, no pun intended. Pause. Um, that's that's when the game broke open, you know, in the third quarter. Your defense is it's a great defense, but it could be so great to the point where if they on the field too long, they're they not going to hold up. And especially when you got these linebackers out and you're trying to scratch and claw and, you know, your offense ain't giving you nothing. I mean, it's so much that a defense can take until the levy starts to break, unfortunately. And, and and that's what happened in that third quarter. Yeah. Um, I mean, all that to say, and I, and I put a button on that game, um, we are in trouble if the goal is Super Bowl to bust. If the goal is Super Bowl to bust, um, which, which, you know, um, I don't think no, well, no, that's a lot. A lot of people had us going to the Super Bowl this year. So, um, yeah, it, it and, and I, and I'll say, cause I said, it, cause I said it in the beginning of the year, I guess I say it every year, but I, <laughs> it's any consolation. I, I mean, I meant it this year. Um, uh, it was, it's Super Bowl of bus and now it's, and, and, and the, for the reason I called it the Super Bowl of bus it seems like 
we may not make the Super Bowl be and it's Ben Roethlisberger. Um, and now on Twitter, um, and, and 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 you tell me what you think about some of these types of ordeals. Yep. I saw a tweet where somebody said, uh, you know, this, uh, can we send Ben Roethlisberger? Uh, can we send Ben Roethlisberger to the Jets for Sam Donald? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I think that was uh, I think that was Steelers Depot that uh, put that out there. I, I did see something with Sam Donald's name in the tweet referencing that but yeah i i, I did see yeah. that um I, I i i think it's too early and, to and, talk and, about and, that. And i mean look it, i can't say well yes okay yeah i i, I agree with you but for shits and giggles and it, and, it, and it might be off of a um important loss like i said i i could take the football team loss i look fine but this Buffalo loss is different for me because Buffalo Buffalo's is the creme de la creme, yeah, the creme de la creme of the AFC. Yeah. Um, yeah. And 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 I wouldn't say they were big boys up until they beat us the way they did Sunday. I think they were on the on the uh, you know they were on their way to it. And, and Chris Collins were alluded to it. It was like mm-hmm. you know Buffalo coming into this game. They have a point to prove. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Pittsburgh has been undefeated, you know, for the majority of the year. And, you know, this and, and even you when you speak about historically, you think about Pittsburgh a certain way, separate from what you think about Buffalo. Yeah. So it was like, you know, Buffalo um Buffalo had every right to come in hungry and play hungry yeah. and, and deliver to make a statement like this is a statement game of course they've had other statement games this year and yeah. but this in december is a statement game and they made the statement and we did not and that that more than anything bothers me yeah um but buffalo's a big boy and i i i think what's sad about you know us talking about them in this way is is that we should have seen we should have seen this coming from the buffalo bills um they were a playoff team last year. You know, they came out of nowhere. Nobody expected anything of them up until the end of last year. And then what do they do? They go out in the offseason. They get Stephon Diggs. Um, they make some other improvements to the roster. And, you know, and for me personally, I was kind of like, yo, I, I, I just got to see this team do it again. And was it because of their history, their previous you know, history of, you know, failures in the postseason, uh, not making a playoffs for what, what was that, a 17-year drought or something like that? Um, yeah, it, that, it, it had a lot to do with that. And so um, we we should have seen this coming because they had a young quarterback, uh, you know, Josh Allen, you know, we talked about him early in the season as a potential MVP clear. candidate. But, but I'm sorry, just to be clear, though, um, I don't, I don't, I didn't see it coming because I didn't believe Josh Allen. Um, last year, he was not a accurate quarterback. No, agree, agree. But they no, made, but, um, they, but they made, but they made improvements the off season to get better. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, not but you don't, yeah, but you don't believe that until you see it, though. Of, of course, of course not. But you, I think, I think everybody knew what they were gunning for with the moves that they made. It wasn't like they, okay. they stood pat and said, hey, we're going to roll with the status quo. Uh-uh, no, nah, we, we're going to go and get one of the best receivers in the league. We're going to do that. We're going to buffer our defense. Um, Josh Allen is going to be in his third year. He's We expect that he's going to improve. And, you know, here we are. They're 10-3, and, and, you know, we, we should we should have seen this coming. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, I, I, I don't. I, I, I'll accept the surprise. Um, I, think, I thought Buffalo would be a good team this year for certain. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if you look at this team right now, you have to. They are the second best team in the AFC. Yep, I agree. Um, you no, know, that that there's no, no, no other way to put that. Um, they ha- have officially taken their spot as the second best team in the AFC uh, this past Sunday. Yep. And um, and let's be clear. That don't mean they can't be beaten in the playoffs. Oh, you know, of course not. Of you know, I'm not. just saying. They got to prove that. Stands, 
Yeah, exactly. But they as it stands that. right now, they are the second best team in the AFC, um, and and uh, they deserve respect. And um, this next up and coming season, mm-hmm. those expectations that we speak of are, are they will be happening this next off season. They, they will, will be higher. About yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they they will be higher than what they were, you know, this past off season. And I gotta ask you this too, man. Um, because I, you, you and I we were tweeting back and forth after that game, and I, I gotta admit, um, watching Josh Allen's uh, interview on TV, and I didn't know who that was for Pittsburgh that came over and was like, "Yo, that was a nice win," and dapped him up yeah. and all that stuff. I mean, but it, I knew who it was immediately. But it, but it, 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 it caught me by surprise because I'm not used to seeing that in that kind of context. So it was kind of like, yo, like, that was kind of weird. And then in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, these tweets are going to start to roll. People are going to start to say, oh, what's this nigga doing? Like, why are you congratulating the, you know, why are you doing that in the middle of his interview and da 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 da? And then I had to think about it, man. I'm like, you know what? These guys congratulate each other all the time. These guys sit in prayer circles after games. These guys dap each other up. Um, after the game, it's just that number one, it was Eric Ebron who has sort of been public enemy number one or number two, depending on how you feel because of his drop passes and because of his play, and the fact that you did it on camera. I, that I think those are the two instances where it makes it more like, like really, like you you had to do that on a, off of off of a loss, like really. So um, I don't, I don't, I don't make much of a big deal because guys congratulate each other all the time. But I will acknowledge that because it's Eric Ebron and because he hasn't played well, that he he gets the smoke. Um, if it were any, um, it's for me. It wasn't because it was Eric Ebron. Mm-hmm. Um, it was because it was a Pittsburgh Steeler off of a law. And you're right in the sense that uh, players congratulate each other. Um, yeah. Look, we should be pissed as a team right now. We should be pissed. And I'm yeah. not saying don't congratulate people. Um, that is the star quarterback who you very clearly saw was doing an interview. Yeah. Um, and yeah. You sound happy. Yeah. And for the record... I'm way too excited to congratulate him. For the record, I've never... In all these games I've watched over the years, I have never seen that before. I have never seen a guy of the opposing team walking in front of an interview to the opposing guy and say, hey, good job, congratulations, dap it up, and all that stuff. I might recall maybe one slight instance... When Belichick was congratulating Ray Lewis after we beat the Patriots in the playoffs that one year. Other than that, I've never seen anything like that before. That's why it was so awkward for me. Well, again, it wasn't even awkward. Like, it wasn't for me. I don't care about the circumstances. I don't. He sounded, when you listen to him in the audio or saw him in the video, he sounded genuinely excited to congratulate. And he couldn't. He could even wait to the end of the interview mm-hmm. to congratulate the dude who just busted y'all ass. And look, I'm not saying don't congratulate. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm only referring to his energy when he congratulated him. Yeah, and into which he did it. Um, he was too excited. That is a look. We're going to the playoffs. I get it. We're going to the playoffs. We're there. Nothing can happen where we're not going to the playoffs. So that is a that is a a weight you know somewhat of a weight off your back. But let's be clear: who you lost to? You lost to the Buffalo Bills, um, who uh, for all intents and purposes was the number three seed at uh, or oh, they're the number three seed. But they are the um, seed. yeah, yeah. But as far as ranking goes, um, I, I can't see a, I can't see a a, a a credible a credible platform that would have. The Pittsburgh Steelers over the Buffalo Bills right now in our in our power ranking. I can't see it yep. because we were outclassed. We were outclassed. Yep. I don't care about injuries. I don't care about how it how it progressed. We were outclassed. Stephon Diggs put in work. Josh Allen put in work. That defense they weren't they put in enough work. Mm-hmm. Um, we 
we lost a statement. We lost a statement game. This was our first loss. In a, this was our first statement loss this year, and it happened in December. It happened in December. If this would have happened in October, I wouldn't have liked it. But it's like, all right, you know, this is the time where we can lose a statement game and still be in the, in the fold of things. Now in December, we're not playing our best football where we need to be playing our best football. Yeah, or at least be close to it, and we're not close to it. We're not we're not ascending in our team's progression. We are uh, we're falling. We're de- descending. We're not playing our on the way to our best football based on our last three performances. That is a problem. Well, look, um, the, the the perfect tonic for that is playing the Cincinnati Bengals next week. So well, I would love to say that, Seth. We play the Colts right after that. Yeah. And just for and and Cleveland right after that and Cleveland yeah yeah um we and, just played a game of the lives and 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 Cleveland is gonna need that game um with the way these you know these records and the AFC is shaping up right now uh Cleveland is going to need that game so you, you you're gonna get everybody's best shot you know minus Cincinnati of course but you're gonna get the Colts best shot you're gonna get the Browns best shot because. Those teams haven't clinched anything yet at this point, and probably I mean, won't. Last... What's that? Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Finish your, go ahead. I'm sorry. Finish your point. No, I, w- I was saying that um, the Browns and the Colts, you're going to get those teams' best shot down the stretch because they haven't clinched anything yet, and they probably won't clinch anything until Week 17. Um, yeah, you're right. I, and I'll say this, and, and I promise, because I said this uh, one time already. This is my last point. Um, I would, I would propose, um, I would propose, um, that we push this division Sunday and that we start resting players. Not necessarily, kick, you know, not having them play entire games, right. but giving them, giving them, but but giving them small breaks because, um, we gonna need, we gonna need it. Mm-hmm. We gonna need. I would propose. Good I would, point. I would propose some small breaks for players. Like I said, not necessarily had not not necessarily being scratches for games, but you know, giving them giving them the second half off. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know something because I, I, uh, I take it a step further, though, Maestro. I I, I I would I would scratch some of these players as um, inactive. I, I I take it a step further. I mean. You, I, I mentioned it earlier. I mean, your bye week earlier because of the Titans' breakout of COVID um, disrupted that bye week for y'all. And then when y'all had the mini bye week during the Thanksgiving week, our breakout of COVID within our, within my team affected y'all in the schedule. So I would I would venture to say, hey, beat Cincinnati on Monday, lock up the division, and then you know. As far as two C three C, that that shouldn't even matter at this point. Guys got to rest up. Let's just put the backups in there. Let's just put the practice squad guys in there, and you know, let's let's just you know give these guys the rest because we're going to be playing wild card weekend, and we're not going to get yeah. that you know bye week. It, that would that would be my mentality. If, unless if I was the Chiefs, comment. unless the Chiefs lose. And I don't see them losing. I, I don't see them losing either. Um, if you're yeah, talking but about if lose, against the Saints, if you're talking about against the Saints, I, I don't I'm, see that I, happening. I, if they if they lose against the Saints, if they lose the week after, I don't know. The, I don't know the schedule on, on top of my head. If they lose, then maybe then maybe I put a little put my foot forward to try to get that first seed. But as it stands right now, I, we're we're not getting that first seed. Let's just let's just nah. let's just get some players healthy. Let's get let's just get healthy, rested. Nah. Try to keep you know try to keep some keep the joints all the meaning. Let them play a little bit, but yeah. like, but but get but get them out of there. Let's, let's let's get some players healthy and get ready for the playoff push. Yeah. And it's and it's it's funny that I'm I'm, I'm proposing your team rest players, which would probably mean. You guys lose to the Colts and lose to the Browns, and that probably doesn't help my team out any any further because I'm going to need one of those teams to have a hiccup along the way. So, but in the in the context of the yeah. Pittsburgh Steelers, 
um, it might be the right thing to do at this point because guys have been playing every week at this point and there's been no rest and you're not going to get the rest into going into the playoffs. Um, so that, that's probably what it's got to come down to. Um, I just hope the Colts or the Browns or even the Dolphins, I, one of those teams, got they, they got to they gotta lose one. One of those teams got to lose one. <laughs> And, yeah. and we, we got to win out to, to, to make it in. So, we'll, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. we'll, see, we'll see what happens there. Um, so, um, to some of these other games, um, and I'm not going to go through, you know, the whole slate and all that crap. I only, but, got, only got one more game I want to talk about, so I don't know how many more you got. Um, so, I'm going to talk about Jalen Hurts and his performance on Sunday. Um, and I know a lot of people was like, Oh, we're so scared for Jalen Hurts because he's going up against the number one defense. They play relentless and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, y'all, come on. The, the Saints defense the, is great. They're great defense. Don't get me wrong. But they haven't played a guy like, you know, Jalen Hurts, at least that I've seen so far. I haven't watched a lot of Saints games, but I don't believe they've played a guy – in Jalen Hurts that can, you know, play so many different dimensions. You know, running, passing, you don't know what he's going to do, you know, the read option and all that stuff. So that's why I picked the Eagles, you know, in the upset. That that was one of the reasons why I went with the Eagles there. And I got to tell you, um, he played he played a good football game. And his team mm-hmm. really was sparked because of his play. That's what the Eagles needed. Yeah, and um, look, is it time for Carson Wentz to be dealt? I think it's. I yes. think the answer's yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I, and I gotta be honest yeah, with I think you. The answer's yeah. He, he, the coach was he was very reluctant to say who was going to start against Arizona next week, and I'm like, why? Like, like, why? Why, Pearson, Why are you doing this to yourself? Just say it. You right, saw it. right. You saw what you saw on the field on Sunday. The team like had a brand new life after watching what Jalen Hurst has is, is been able to do. So why are you you know going about this back and forth? Oh, we trying to we're, we're trying to scheme for Arizona. No, 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 no. Arizona knows exactly what y'all going to do. Y'all going to start Jalen Hurst. Let's get it on. You know what I'm saying? Like let, 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 let's just stop it. Um. Yeah, it's time yep. to deal Carson Wentz, man. It, yep. It's time. Um, yeah. I heard yeah. that um Frank Reich is interested in um trading for Carson Wentz if it you know if the opportunity presented itself. I don't know what Philip Rivers is going to do after this year. I would imagine that this is his last season, and if that's the case, then I think the coach should make a play for Carson Wentz at this point. If they're interested, I don't want the coach. I don't I, I, then because I, I, I want Jacoby Brissett to start somewhere. So I don't, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, no, good that, point. But. Good, 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 good point. But I'm, I'm saying in the sense that Frank Wright. Yeah, was, the Frank Wright. They know they're familiar. He was mm-hmm. there when Wentz was on the end. Yeah, he went before he got hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah familiar. I, 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 I get why. Yeah. Um, I just would rather Jacoby Brissett start and he go to mm-hmm. the uh, went go to Indianapolis and start. Yeah, um, no, but I'm point. with you. I'm good with point. you. He should be dealt. Um, I'm even with you that I would give Carson Wentz a, a never starting job for a never team. Um, just that in Um He he deserves another shot. I, I and, and deserves is a strong word. Yeah. Um, he the problem get is another contract. Shot because, yeah, right, right. That's the problem. Uh, who's gonna? Yeah, right. Who's gonna deal with that? Um, but. If he finds a way to go, um, uh, you know, wishing the best of luck. Um, but Jalen Hurts should be the uh, should be the starter um, for the foreseeable future. Um, I mean, you drafted him. I, I believe you drafted him uh, that way. You drafted him to either make Carson Wentz step up yep. or replace him. So Carson mm-hmm. Wentz didn't step up. Hurts should replace him. I'm, I'm, I'm with you there 100%. Um, my the, my last game, 
if you didn't have anything else still in the Eagles Saints game. My last, uh, my I did, game. I did want to say, I, okay. I, 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 not to cut you off, but sure. um, I, I'm I'm going to reiterate the statement that I made from last week. Right now, do not count the Eagles out of the NFC East race right now. Um, when you look at what happened to Alex Smith on Sunday, and they got the win, and Chase Young is a monster, but Alex Smith, I don't know what his situation with that leg is going to be. But regardless of what it is, they got the Seahawks coming to town on Sunday, and yeah. I don't think they're going to beat the Seahawks. I give the Eagles a great chance to beat the Cardinals in Arizona on Sunday. So if that happens... And you got to play the Cowboys the following week. You being the Eagles, I believe they could beat the Cowboys the following week. I believe the Washington football team is going to beat Carolina the following week. And that's going to set up for Washington at Philly week 17. Week 17. All or nothing for the division. And I think the Eagles are going to get it. And right you there. went right into my point. You went right into my point, um, but I have a different take. Um, I think that defensive line, and you said everything I was going to say outside of the outside of the outcome. Yeah. Um, I think that defensive line is going to get the football team into the playoffs. Mm. I do. Um, meaning, meaning they're going to play the Eagles in Week Seven for it all, mm-hmm. and. They're going to beat Philly. Montez is what Sweat, Chase Young. Uh-huh. Um, they are going to unleash hell. They're okay. they're going to be Philly in week seventeen. That's okay. that's you 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 took my entire narrative for my last game and mm-hmm. and, and and yeah, I, I think the football team um are going to make the playoffs. They won't do anything in the playoffs, but they will make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And 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 um in week seventeen against Philadelphia. Hey, that, I gotta, that was I gotta tell you something though. Let's say let's say Washington does get the four seed, they clinch the division, and let's say they draw somebody like the Rams. I I don't know, man. They getting smashed. I, I think I, they getting smashed. Trey. Smashed by the Rams. They getting smashed. I I don't yeah, know, man. I mean, you just said it yourself. That D line. You you don't think that D line. Can get after Jared Goff and make him look ordinary, and make him yeah, know, make some but, mistakes. But I, but I also think whoever is that quarterback, um, whoever that quarterback for the football team for Washington, got to deal with Aaron Donald. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that secondary, and that secondary, they're not sorry in that secondary. Whereas, um, whereas I, I got I believe more in Washington. I believe in Washington's offense. Uh, expo- you know, getting something off on Philadelphia, then I believe then Washington's offense getting something off on the Rams' defense. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. No, good point. Good point. I mean, Rams got a better defense, I think, all around than Washington does. Um, sure. No, I got to buy that. But I, I, could, I could see that D line mm-hmm. really getting after Jared Goff. And, you know, who knows? In a game like that, where. Both defensive lines are getting after it. I mean, it, it, it's anybody's ball game at that point. Yeah, you know. I mean, the battle of the trenches, and then and then and then and then if we gotta go trenches, um, I for certain like the Rams' offensive line more than I like the Redskins' offensive line at week set. You know, in the playoffs. Yeah. 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 So I mean, yeah. That's true. Say what you That's want true. from that. Say what you want from that. Right, right. Um, you said you had another game? No, 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 no. Like I said, you, you went straight into it. I was going to talk about the football team oh, okay. and how I felt like they were going they were going to the playoffs. Um, uh-huh. I guess if we're done with football, um, Giannis, <laughs> your boy Giannis got the uh, five-year, $228 million extension with the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, I guess quelling all rumors that he was going to leave and uh, go join a uh, no a contending team like the uh, Warriors or whoever the Heat whoever you had in the rumor mill. Uh, mm-hmm. He's you know he is a Milwaukee Buck for the next five years. Toronto, <laughs> <laughs> Toronto, yeah. Toronto was in that mix too. Right, right. He is a Milwaukee Buck for the next five years. Congratulations, to be honest, onto to um, Yes, yes. I had to learn his name now because I no longer call him Greek Freak. Um. 
So Look. when he wins the chip, is that when you're gonna call him the Greek freak? When he wins the chip. When he wins the chip is a very bold statement. I don't know that he's gonna win the chip unless they about to put a team around him. Mm-hmm. They have to put it. They're gonna to have to put an out beside him. And you know this is this has officially become a league of uh, you know dynamic duos. They're gonna to have to put. They're gonna to have to put a rock. They're gonna to have to put a. Funny enough, they're gonna to have to put a Batman next to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, but he even said it himself. He he kind of came out and was like, look, you know, I don't care if I'm Batman or Robin. He didn't say it that way, but I'm kind of paraphrasing. And yeah. He basically said that, yo, if, you know, somebody came in and was the alpha dog, then, you know, I'm cool with that. I just want to, you know, I just want to win. You know, that, you know that, that's well, his whole mentality. I don't have much on, I don't have much more on that conversation, but right now, more than ever, they need to figuring out why James Harden has come out and said he doesn't want to play in Houston. He don't care about the fact that John Wall is there. More than ever, they need to figure out how they can get James Harden to Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I talked about that last week. Yeah, yeah. Like they got yeah. to do what they got to do. They got to um, do what they got to do. Chris Middleton, peace. If, peace. If, if that's what that means. Then, Who else you know, y'all want? So Who else it. y'all want? Who else y'all want? Yeah, right, right. But it's gonna it's gonna be first round draft picks. Involved in that package too, so look, and they, they already gave up first rounders for Drew Holiday too. For Drew Holiday, yeah, um, yeah. They whoever whoever needs to be whoever or whatever needs to be dealt needs to be dealt because the because Giannis I was going to call him that because Giannis needs a Batman. Mm. Um, if he does not get a Batman, uh, this money is being spent because they just want him, but I don't believe he gets a chip. Uh, without this, without a Batman, I don't. I don't believe. I don't believe, and and I, I would love to be wrong about another black man. I don't believe that he is going to gain the jumper needed to uh, take over basketball games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be a while before that happens. Um, but, yeah, we'll, but, we'll and to be honest, yeah. and, and if it does happen, I, it, I, it, if it does happen. Athleticism is going to go down. This dude does not know how to play basketball yet. He's just freakishly athletic. Athletic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Um, we'll see what happens. It's still the Eastern Conference, so you know, and, and anything's possible. But they they're gonna have to deal with they, the Nets. They're gonna have to deal with yeah. the Nets. Period. You know what I mean? I mean so. And in some in some respects, they're still gonna have to deal with the Toronto Raptors and the Miami Heat. Mm-hmm. And the Celtics, possibly. Oh, I mean, you know, possibly, yes. I mean, yeah. take, what you, yeah. take what you will. Um, Jason Tatum's the, the same dog, so, over there. Um, you know. Yeah, Boston, Boston Celtics, right. Yeah, Jason Tatum got his money, um, too, so. I mean, yeah. hell. I mean, hell, Um, depending on how you feel about what Doc Rivers might do with Philly, mm-hmm. um. You know, an argument could be made. I wouldn't make it, but an argument could be made that the Greek freak, sorry, that's not his name anymore, that Giannis Antetokounmpo um, and the Milwaukee Bucks, and I, I'm, I, I'm not willing to make his argument, but they could take a step back. They could yeah. take a six type step back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I remember yeah. when, I remember it, it might have been last season or the season before, like when, when niggas was talking about the Sixers and the Bucks in a potential playoff matchup, like, niggas was talking, like, I heard Sixers fans talking about, yo, we want, we want Milwaukee, like, we, we, we match up better with Milwaukee than we do anybody else, so, it, it's not out of the possibility, if that was a playoff series, that the Sixers could take them out. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, he need, he needs his Batman, but, all that for with all that being said, because let me because I I don't I don't even feel like we said congratulations congratulations to Giannis Antetokounmpo get your money black man get yep. your money black man we are, we are certainly proud that you getting your money and no you are never you are another black man in this world with the opportunity to change the world with your financial gain mm-hmm. um but if we're speaking basketball. Um, this I, I I would love to say that this makes me feel like the Milwaukee Bucks is going to be a uh, playoff content. I mean, a championship contender. I'm sorry. Um, this doesn't make me feel like they're a championship contender. 
So how many years do you think he actually fulfills that contract before he quote unquote requests a trade? Um I give it this year and then next year. If Man, they put, if they don't if go. they don't put if they don't put if they don't put somebody in in Milwaukee to play with him, I no no, I don't see that happening. Bingo. I get that Shrew Holiday is a great two-way player, and that's great because we would need you would need him on the team as well. But he doesn't get it done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think we're on the same page here. Um, I give it a couple of years, and I think after that, if they don't it, at least get to a finals, like right. if they if they lose the finals, they're okay. But if they don't get to the finals in these two years, then. I, I think you're going to hear some noise about um, him wanting to get out of Milwaukee and actually you know, team up with somebody that can actually put a team together um, you know, with the right group of guys. And, you know, you talked about duos. You know, this is a league of duos. Um, that team could potentially have the guy that Giannis may want to play with. So, yeah, I give it two years. Um, yep. we, we, we can stick with basketball. Um, shout out to Keontae Johnson. Of, uh, he played for Florida, I think. I, I can't remember what team that was. But um, in the game on Saturday, he collapsed on the court and um, was rushed to the hospital. And for a while on Sunday, I believe, was in a coma. And it wasn't looking good. And then today I get the news that um, he is in stable condition. Um, his conditioning is getting much better. And um, they're hoping for, you know, full recovery. Um, I don't know what the cause of that collapse was. I don't know if it was yeah. something COVID-related or, you know, something other, you know, some other health condition. But I'm just glad that the kid is okay and that yeah, nothing serious sure. happened to him. So, uh, shout out to Keontae sure. Johnson, you know, for that. Press, press to Keontae Johnson. Yeah, absolutely. Um, D'Angelo yeah. Ball was signed and then released by the Detroit Pistons, and I have no idea why. Um, I don't either. It's so funny because Debbie was like, hey, one of the Ball brothers got cut. And I was like, yeah, um, D'Angelo from the Pistons. And you know, cause she she gets the she gets the brothers mixed up and stuff. Like I, I told Alonzo's mm-hmm. in New Orleans, and uh, Charlotte just drafted um, Lamelo. Lamelo, yeah. You know, so I did hear about that. Now I don't know why he got cut either. I don't know why the Detroit Pistons are, you know, going that route. I think they need all the youth they can possibly get at this point. So I I, I don't understand that either. I do not understand it. Um, you know, it's 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 funny that we, I, I was, uh, you know, praising um, praising Levar Ball. You know, like all all his antics in the, you know, in years prior, because he's certainly come down since. But in all for all of that, he had three sons in the NBA, and um, you know, along with him, the Holiday Brothers and the uh, Ante Tacumbos, yeah, um, all have uh, you know, a trio of players in the nba and um i yeah, was like man you know say what you see right like say what you want about lavar ball but um it's only other, it's only two other families that's, that's doing that yeah, um exactly. so so that that was certainly something worth mentioning um i would love to know what happened and for them to heck cut him so quick i would love to know why they picked him up to begin with um, mm-hmm. I, I'll say this in, uh, you know, to put a ribbon on it, uh, I do hope that somebody picked them up. Um, I'm not willing so. to say it. Yeah, you know, because, look, mm-hmm. I just, you know, for all intents and purposes, he was looking to be a high draft pick um, when he was in UCLA um, before all of that, ha- you know, all that stuff had happened. So, um, you know, I would love to see if he could get it together and um and be a productive NBA player. Yeah, I think it's a great story, um, though. I think it's a great and, story. You know what I'm saying? Like to have three kids, three sons in the league at the same time. Um, that's legendary stuff right there. So I, I hope that yeah, somebody sure. picks sure. this guy up. Yeah. Um. But 
We should, um, and obviously, um, you know, the Aunt Takumpo, Papa Aunt Takumpo, or Holiday, you know, they're not in the line, like, you know, talking how they're talking, talking mm-hmm. how LeVar Ball is talking. So, but I do think it's important to, uh, um, give props to those, those families and that father, those fathers and mothers and, you know, et cetera, for that achievement because before the ball was out, um, those guys had already achieved it. So shout out mm-hmm. to those to those families. Um, I I don't know if you did you catch any of the uh, the Nets versus the Wizards. I have not watched any preseason NBA basketball yet. I won't make a big fuss of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I will say this: um, our first round. I, I still don't got his name yet, uh, Devi. Uh, I'm, I'm butchering his name. I don't got his name yet. Right. Um, Score sixteen. Didn't miss a shot. Did miss a shot the um, the other day against the Nets. Uh, Hashimura looks good. Cash like we we you know I, it's the preseason. I get yeah. it. I'm just saying that the young boys on the team look good, and I'll just leave it there. Well, look, man, um, I think they're going to get to the playoffs. Um, they might be a 7-8 seed at this point, but I think with Russell Westbrook there and, you know, Beal is still there and, you know, you got these young boys and you got the uh, Japanese kid or Asian kid. Hachimura, too, right? Hachimura, yeah. Yeah, Hachimura, Hachimura. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I think the... Uh, yeah, I, I think y'all are a playoff team at this there's point. There's even, there's even a play... There's even a play where uh, Hatchmore got a little aggressive with Kevin Durant under the basket. I know, you know, mm-hmm. I don't put a, I, I'm not going to put stock into it. There's no stock to be put into it. He just beat him for a rebound and dunked it. But, yeah. Um, yeah. but I, I'm just going to throw the, the little caveat out there. Hatchmore, Hatchmore is continuing to look good. Debbie is looking good. The rookie, um, young boys, young boys looks good against the Brooklyn Nets. That I, that's, I just wanted to make it known on. On tape that mm. that is good against the Nets, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, I, I just got a couple football notes here. Um, Packers push the North, and right now I think they're the one seed right now. So you know they're looking pretty good for that. Uh, the Chiefs clinched the West on Sunday. We all saw that coming. Um, they're at the top right now. Um, I, I, I I don't want to talk about this game like break it down really, but I just want to acknowledge that. The Vikings, for all their history, have just had problems with kicking, um, with kickers of the like, and it just continues no matter who kicks for this franchise. So Dan Bailey missed three field goals. I I think two of them were like 20-plus yard field goals, and he missed all three of them, and he also missed the extra point. And needless to say, um, he I, I I pinned that loss against the Bucks on that kicker because the Vikings mm-hmm. early in that game were giving it to the Bucks, and I don't care what Brady and Arians tells you, that team still doesn't look right to me. Yeah, even after the bye they mm-hmm. had, and even after you know losing to the Chiefs and and the Saints, you know blowout a few weeks back. They still don't look right. Yep, I agree. Yep. So, um, just the baseball notes. I agree. Um, and the, my last. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was I was going right there. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. No, 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 no. You you said you said the same thing I'm saying. Oh, okay. Um, I was just going to say. Uh, you go ahead. You can go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Cleveland Indians. Um, they came out Sunday night and announced that they were going to drop the Indians name off of their team. Of course, this is in light of the Washington football team dropping the Redskins name. And then you got other teams like the Braves, the Chiefs, the Blackhawks, um, you know, questionable whether they're going to follow suit or not. But the Indians are for right now are announcing that after the 2021 season, which I don't understand why they're waiting that long to do it. But nonetheless, they're going to um, put a halt on the name Indians. So um, I don't know what they're going to name themselves. The Cleveland baseball team temporarily? I don't know. I hope they find a, t- a name before it's time. 
They got time. They do. They do. And, and maybe that's why they decided after the you know next season to do it. Maybe they're just trying to come up with some things. But, you know, it has to be, for me, it has to be relatable to the city of Cleveland if you're going to rename it. Yeah. So. Um, uh, I, I, don't have, I don't have any bright ideas for the name, but uh, if they changed it, changed it, I'm glad. Um, I'm happy for people making advancements um, in their thinking. Um, mm-hmm. Change the name, uh, whatever you change it, I'll criticize it when I hear it. Yeah. What, what, what is Cleveland known for? I have no idea, my G. Mm, okay. Yeah, I, I don't I have know no, either. I have no idea. Both those in harmony, like, I have no idea, my G. Like, Cleveland, I know nothing about the city of Cleveland. Okay. Yeah, I, I have no idea either, except for what you just said there. <laughs> uh, so, all right. Great cash. Like, I have nothing on Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what what their famous what their famous dish is. I understand that there's uh, a level of crime crime in Cleveland, um, but yeah, I mean that's I every that's every major city in this country. Yeah, right. So, so, yeah. so yeah. they're not. I mean, they're not murder capital, but yeah, got, right. They, yeah, it's just it's just yeah, it's just like listen, listen. They got um, their hoods. They got their hoods. Yeah, like every right, every every ghetto, every city. Like it, um, the, I ain't got. Yeah, I'm glad that they have made the necessary changes to come into the new way of thinking of the world we live in today. Um, if it's a good name, I'll say it. If it's a bad name, I'll say it. Yeah. Um, and and that it just that's that's just what it is. Mm-hmm. Um. So I do want to congratulate. Morgan State University, um, they just got a big forty million dollar donation from a person named Mackenzie Scott, who I did some research on, and she apparently used to be married to the CEO of Amazon, uh, Jeff uh, Bezos, I think his name is. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she she had some bread and decided, you know what, I'm going to contribute to an HBCU, and that HBCU happens to be Morgan State University, so just want to give them a big uh, shout-out, uh, shout-out to her, you know, for making yeah. the donation one, um, and I, I hope that the university um, spends that money wisely. Um, mm. I'd love to see scholarships, a lot, lots of them. Um, love to see, and, I, and I've, I've driven by Morgan State a few times. They did all kinds of upgrades to their buildings and all that kind of stuff, but really, that money should go towards the education of these kids and upcoming um, potential college students, so I'm going to give them a big shout out for doing that. Shout out to her. What did you say? You kind of broke up there for a minute. I said shout out to her. Shout out to her. I'm just saying shout out to Mickey Scott. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. And I, I just got one last thing, man. Um, I, I did hear that this is off, you know, it's off sports topic related. It's not sports. Um, I got the news late that the Ashanti Keisha Cole versus uh, was postponed because Ashanti mm-hmm. came out and said she tested positive for COVID-19. And I hope she gets well soon and, you know, feels better. Um, but she did say um, immediately that she was still a thousand percent down to still do the verses, um, just doing it from home. Um, you know, kind of like the way they started out doing it, yeah. you know, when I do mm-hmm. live and, um, Swiss and Tim just decided, um, no, we're just gonna push yeah. it off until next month. Push it off. And, yeah, and, and, yeah. and, and, and people got to understand this because I've, I've seen a lot of, um, I, I've seen a lot of bashing towards Swiss and Tim and Ashanti for, you know, not making this battle happen, and everybody's asking, well, why can't they just go back to what it used to be? Like, that was the whole point of the verses. You see, people, this is what you gotta understand. It's business. It, 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 people, you gotta understand. You got the Apple deal, right? And, and you and I have seen the numbers that they've been doing on Apple Music. So, they weren't prepared to do it remotely the way they, you know, used to do it. Um, they they need those numbers. So for them to try to put a IG live feed 
on Apple Music, I just don't know if that was feasible, number one. And number two, you, you got to have the equipment to make that happen. They were not going to lose that platform. Um, and then when you talk about the whole Surat deal, too, they're not going to lose that either. So it's business at the end of the day. But you know what? We get a treat. We get E40 versus Too Short on Saturday. So I'm excited. So... And, and I and I, and I got to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I am not, not that I don't like these guys. I I never was a fan of them. I, I didn't come up listening to their music a lot. So I'm really going to be binge listening to, you know, these guys' songs. Like, I mean, I know E-40's stuff. I mean, Tell Me Where to Go. Um, I, I know some of, you know, like some of the later stuff. But I, I'm really not hip to these brothers music like that so i'm i'm just gonna be bitch listening to some of their music prior to saturday i'm excited and i'm gonna be drunk um i am fans of both um more of their early stuff um obviously uh born and mac with too short and um mm-hmm. uh, e40 dust and disgusted and even back uh i know you i know you remember e40 sprinkle me uh, I think I do remember Sprinkle Me. I think I do remember uh, that. Okay, yeah. See, those, these, these songs were big in my upcoming. Getting by Too Short was big in my upcoming. Freaky Tales was big in my uh, uh, Too Short upcoming. And uh, 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 um, uh, Do you remember when E-40 had a rap beef with Rasheed Wallace in 96? A beef with Rasheed Wallace. It sounds familiar. It really, it really does. It didn't Rashid? He did a diss track. Yeah, or, they they had they had diss okay. tracks. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I kind of remember that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But um, I mean, the pimp versus the the pimp versus the hustler. Like it is. Mm-hmm. This is this is this is um this is going to be good for me. I, I don't know how many other people is going to be good for in my immediate in my, in my immediate circle. But I plan on being drunk. Um, and I plan on dancing the night away. <laughs> so who you got winning? I got E forty. Um E forty got too many uh joints mm-hmm. um in the ladder. Um in the ladder. Okay. Um, you know, like the the E the, the Lil John the Lil John the yep. hypey movie. The hypey joint, yeah. Yeah, like um I think E forty just got more got more hits. Um but um I I I'll say I'll say thirteen seven E forty. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I did have a chance to just kind of look at their albums, not necessarily the songs per se. Man, too short. Been doing it for <laughs> like since we was like the 80s. little. Yeah. That has, that was E seven. Eighty three, right? Uh, I don't know if it was that early, but um, oh, okay. I, I I thought I saw he dropped uh, the album at eighty three. I mean, I'll double check that again. But he, I mean, long story yeah, short, he's been I don't doing know. it for a minute. I know, born the first the first album that I the first album that I was ever aware of was born uh, born. I think born the Mac was before the joint that had uh, freaks. I think it was. I think it was. Um, yeah, I think it was um, Born and Mac. I'm about to. Mm. Don't Start Rapping was one of his first albums, October 24th, 1983. Yeah, I do not know about that album. Yeah, I, and, then, and then the album I after that, my... Players, came out May 27th, 1985. Oh, yeah, see, yeah, you, you, yeah, you, you hit me with some. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you said, so you said, what's the first album you heard Life of? Life is too. Sh- Life is too short was 1989. That was the one that okay. I remember. Okay. So and, and see that, that and see and see and see the ones that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. How, these weren't commer- to my understanding. I'm, I'm only basing this because I'm scrolling down Spotify. These yep. those weren't commercial releases. You're probably you're mostly right about that. Because I don't, these albums didn't really make like the, I guess the Billboard 200 or whatever they call it these days. Like it wasn't, like these albums weren't ranked. These were, these were in the trunk, these were in the trunk albums. Gotcha, gotcha. That's not for me, that's not to say that those don't count. I'm just saying that those weren't commercial albums. Those were more underground. Those were underground albums. 
Gotcha. I would think. Cause gotcha. Like I said, Born to Mac is the first I've ever heard of Too Short. Okay, yeah, Born to Mac in 87. And obviously, and obviously I was a kid, so it's not, I'm not talking about like I knew of who he was in 1989. I'm just saying when sure. I did my research. Yeah. Sure, sure. And, and and before Born to Mac, there was Raw Uncut and X-Rated, which was 1986. Okay. I'm, I'm even familiar with X-Rated a little bit. Okay. That sounds familiar a little bit. Okay. And then, and then before that was the ones I mentioned earlier, players, and then don't stop rapping. So, yeah, he he, he been out a while, man. And said 1983. Let's be clear, I was born in 1983. That's what I'm saying. We, we yeah. was born in '83, so mm-hmm. this this dude has been doing it for my life, a long time for our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shout so. out, and, and and his last release was like 2000 last year, so mm-hmm. he's active still. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the catalog is is lengthy, like <laughs> like Man. it's nonstop. So yeah, I, 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 this this will be this will be a good one. This will be. A good I'm one. going to enjoy myself. I I'm going to enjoy myself. It, it, and it's, I'm drunk. It, it's just that when you when you're born and raised in New York City, and you know you're you're in the music capital of the country, you, you don't get a lot of exposure to. Uh, Stuff outside of New York, the music capital so, of the country. That's an interesting comment. So, you know, yeah. I mean, when you when you're you the mecca of hip hop, I wouldn't call you the music capital of the country, but I, I, we won't turn this into a music podcast. Sure, sure, but uh, you know what I mean, though. I okay. mean, I okay. I if, you, if you're saying the mecca of hip hop, I give you that. You know that, yeah. That, that that's kind of what I, that, that's okay. what I mean. Okay. Without using you know different terminology. But yeah, I mean, I, I I wasn't exposed to those guys really all that much. So right. But um, I'm interested to see how this go down, man. Uh, I'm ready. Yep, yep. Hey, uh, I want to give a big shout out to a couple guys in the chat room. We got Big Kev three hundred three. Yes, sir. And we also got Jelani from the Wait a Minute Show popped in here. What's he, happening? He just had a comment about the Eagles, and he says that it looks like they may be getting healthy, and Jalen might be that dude, and he also agrees with you, Maestro, that Washington was going to give them a run. Um, but you, you, you're more so extending it to Washington's going to beat them in you know, week 17. Yeah. So we'll, we'll definitely see about that. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat room. Shout out to everybody out there listening. Uh, don't forget, folks, you can follow us on Twitter at Barbershop SPOR2 and at Maestro Styles. You can follow us on Instagram at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast, at Trey Frazier, at Maestro Styles. We got the Facebook page. We also got the YouTube channel. Um, and if you guys have any questions or comments in regards to the show, you can email us at Barbershop Sports Talk 1 at gmail.com. So, Maestro, if you got nothing else, man, I'm going to head on downstairs and give me something to eat, man. Yes, sir. No doubt, no doubt. Y'all have a good week. We'll be back next week. Peace. Uh-huh.